Patrolling the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter. Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z it's only claim to fame being that it is, as far as we know, the lowest grossing movie in box office history, having managed to bring in less money than a basic white girl Starbucks order. Seriously, the only entries on its IMDb trivia page are just two variations of that fact. There is of course a caveat here. Anybody can make a movie, release it, and receive Tiny Tim's allowance in return. Hell, just look at most of the stuff that's uploaded to YouTube. So here we're talking about movies that actually got a release in cinemas, and were thus official, so to speak. It's also not to be confused with the similarly titled Zizix, another low-budget thriller from 2006 that was also set in the Mojave Desert and also made almost no money. That's like a solar eclipse level of coincidence. Now before we talk about the movie itself, let's address that all-important question that's probably the reason you're watching this video in the first place. How? Well, the answer might surprise you! <laughs> Sorry. Really though, it might not be the answer you were expecting. Basically, they didn't even try. You see, actor Leo Grillo was passionate about animals, and wanted to make movies about animals that weren't just boring family stuff like Lassie. So he teamed up with director John Penny. And they said, yeah, let's make our own movie with blackjack and hookers. And we'll set it in the literal arse end of nowhere that won't be arduous to film in at all. And we'll name it after a real place in the arse end of nowhere, but we'll spell it wrong for some reason. Seriously, I don't know why they did that. And we'll focus on the foreign money for now and give it a proper re-release in the US when our star's careers take off. <laughs> Eventually... And then we'll have proven our movie making chops and be able to make Rambo, but with a dog. <laughs> you know what? They should have just made that instead. That would have been amazing. In fairness, there was actually some method to this madness. It's just that life tends to prefer madness. Penny even thought that most cursed of thoughts. Okay, what's the worst thing that can happen? The movie doesn't turn out good. No one sees it. Dude. You jinxed it, man! <laughs> you jinxed it! Grillo and Penny, which sounds like a pair of magicians, didn't really care about making money in the US. But under an agreement they had with the Screen Actors Guild, which allowed their cast members to be in low-budget movies for less than their usual rates, Zavivas' Road had to have a theatrical release in the States. So they thought, okay, how do we get out of this while expending the minimum amount of money and effort? The answer was to rent a single theatre in Dallas, Texas for $1,000, show the movie once a day at noon for six days, and give it no publicity. Legally, it meant their asses were completely covered, and they saved a lot of money in actors' fees. It also meant that, in that time, only six people went to see the movie, which, amusingly enough, is far less people than actually worked on it, for a grand total box office gross of... $30. In fact, the film's makeup artist took her friend to see it, and Grillo insisted on refunding them their money. So when all was said and done, after costs of around $1.2 million, Zavivazavivazaz Road had actually taken in... just $20. I could remake this movie shot for shot with Warhammer minis, put it on YouTube, and make more money than that. This Adeptus Custodes Telemon Heavy Dreadnought's arm cost more than that. Yeah, I have a plastic crack problem. I am getting help. Things weren't all bad though, because the foreign markets they were targeting brought in almost $370,000 in DVD sales by the end of the year. But of course, it was the results of their odd business strategy that got everyone's attention. And Penny was apparently mortified to discover that his creation was only being talked about in the context of its singularly low box office takings. An unintentional badge of dishonour without which Zazuzaz's road would have been completely lost to history. And having actually watched it, I think maybe it should have been. Because it's not very good. But first... Nature.
In this next episode of Nature's Greatest Marvels, we explore the common house Raycon. Good visual effects. This variety of premium wireless earbud can be found in every kind of dwelling, except in those whose owners are just not poggers. While young, they tend to be wary of other creatures, hiding in hard to reach places such as room corners and drug cabinets. Much like their outdoor counterparts, they have much variation in their colours, allowing them to blend in with their environment and avoid detection. They can also nest inside a protective shell that allows them to recharge, to reach up to 8 hours of battery life, or up to 32 hours if kept within their case. In addition, they can use their added base to ward off predators, such as the common house cat or the boozy suburban housewife. Once they have reached maturity, they will also use Bluetooth to bond with a suitable device, before luring an unsuspecting host with their sleek appearance and the prospect of soothing sounds. Once attached, their comfortable, form-fitting design ensures that they remain in their new nest despite the rigours of a couch potato lifestyle. They come with a selection of gel tips to maximise the host's comfort. And unlike some other similar creatures, they won't stick out of the ears, thus not hindering the host's attractiveness to potential mates. And their remarkable levels of noise isolation will mean that no one else will hear the screams. Eventually, their tendrils will reach deep into the host's brain, taking over its pleasure centre and allowing it to forget about the pain of having to watch awful garbage for rent money. In addition to starting at half the price of other premium audio brands, while still sounding just as good of course, they also come with a 45-day guarantee return policy. To get 15% off your order of this remarkable creature and help support this channel, head over to buyraycon.com forward slash cynical reviews or click the link in the description and pinned comment. And tune in next time as we take a look at the marvellous life of the mysterious flying Raycons. <laughs> <laughs> the first and most obvious sign that this movie is cursed is the choice of leads. At that time, Catherine Heigl was known for being in Grey's Anatomy, and Grillo and Penny's gamble that her career would take off wasn't entirely a stupid one, since she became pretty big in the late 2000s. Not sure why it was necessary to get her tits out on the poster, though. <laughs> Anything to sell the movie, right? But then she committed the biggest oopsie you can in Hollywood. Talked sh** about the people she worked with and tanked her career. It's funny how they cared more about that than about widely known sexual abuse, but okay, Hollywood, do give us another lecture on girl power. Thora Birch, who you may remember from my videos on the terrible Dungeons & Dragons movie and the Pregnancy Pact, was offered the role before Heigl. I would say she dodged a bullet, but her career was also circling the drain by that point. And now she's condemned to the role of a recurring character in these reviews. And then there's Tom Sizemore. After starring in blockbuster epics like Saving Private Ryan and Black Hawk Down, he developed a reputation for fighting the law and the law winning, and has since become almost as untouchable as Steven Seagal. No joke, he was actually arrested before he could show up to film for violating the terms of his parole for a drug-related offence. And given his performance, I wouldn't be surprised if he was off his face the entire time. Not that I'd really blame him for that. And finally, in the main role, there's Grillo himself, who I'd never heard of before and he was only in one movie afterwards. Which is a good thing, because his acting is utterly terrible. It approaches Neil Breen levels of bad. I can't believe you committed suicide. I cannot believe you committed suicide. I can't believe you're going to throw it all no. in for what? No. That no. girl. How could you have done this? How could you have committed suicide? No. That thing, whatever hell you made for yourself, no. you better hope no. you're gonna... He's also rocking some chest hair that would make Derek Savage proud. But he founded an animal rescue centre and still runs it to this day, so you know what? All is forgiven, you absolute king. Zvek Zvezizer is the story of Grillo's character, Grant, who's having an affair with Heigl's horny bimbo, Marissa. 
Sizemore plays her abusive ex-boyfriend Joey, who shows up to ruin the party. Grant kills him in self-defense, so they take his body deep into the Mojave Desert to bury it. But because they're the most incompetent murderers you'll ever see on screen, Joey's not actually dead, easily escapes, and the movie turns into a really shitty cat and mouse game. Think of it like Jaws, but Tom Sizemore is the shark, and it isn't scary. Sizemore does his best, hey kids, got any crack? impression, and most of his entrances are just bad jump scares. Oh, cinnamon burns, ow, stop, cinnamon's burning, ah! Oh. Jesus Christ. What the He's also having way too much fun playing with that plastic knife. If Marissa was meant to be dumb and annoying, Heigl did a fair job of conveying it. Oh, I did it! And that sucking noise she keeps making will drive you up the fucking wall. Both of them are at least passable, but Grillo shows barely any emotion considering all the f***ed up things that are happening around his character. You're gonna kill her? It's not a her. It's an it. You're out of your f***ing mind. Am I? Yeah, you're talking about killing an innocent woman. They're the only people in this movie, except this poor guy who gets hit in the face to a sound effect you've heard in like 50 different video games. <laughs> Oh, and uh, this guy, but we'll get to him in a second. None of the characters are at all sympathetic or likeable, and there's no reason to give a sh** about them. The Rattlesnake is the best character purely because it causes Marissa pain. Partway through the movie, there's a big twist, and the film pretends like this is some big revelation. Except the preceding dialogue and visuals make it so obvious that it's not at all surprising. The movie kills its own mysteries. It's a good example of the difference between foreshadowing and telegraphing. It's also the conclusion your brain will most likely reach in order to explain all of the stupid and nonsensical things that happen. It tries to emulate Twilight Zone and David Lynch in a few ways, but just comes across like a shitty episode of American Horror Story. Or more like a student production, actually. Those were more the vibes I got. The dialogue is really bad and relies too much on exposition. Multiple plot points don't make any sense, even given the weird directions the movie takes. The lighting is not only awful, but incredibly inconsistent. There's so many jump scares that they actually start to become funny. The blood effects look really shoddy and change even between one shot and the next. And I swear they just use jam at one point. And the movie is just pretty boring for the most part. So the story isn't really worth talking about in more detail but it does have its moments of unintentional hilarity. Like when Grillo struggles to get Sizemore's body through a doorframe. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> when he struggles to get up a shallow incline. And when this happens. No! Oh God, I don't even see him. He came out of nowhere! What the hell was he doing? I didn't even see him! He came out of nowhere! I didn't even see him! He came out of nowhere! This is something you put in a parody movie, not what you do as the actual final dramatic moment of your thriller, for f**k's sake! Also on the plus side, there's... Uh... Uh, hold on, let me think. Um... Oh, there's a dog! He's a guard dog, but he's a good boy, so it's okay. And so, that is Z Zizik's Road, the lowest grossing movie of all time. Sometimes funny, mostly bad, and overall, pretty unremarkable. There's really not much else to say about it. To their credit though, Grillo and Penny seem to have handled the unexpected negative attention pretty well. After all, unless your movie is cuties, there really is no such thing as bad publicity. And only about a dozen people would have heard of this film had it not been for that weird quirk of history. I will say though, that I actually have a weird respect for their decision not just to go ahead and make their own movie, but also to just not give a fuck and only show it in one cinema? That's... That's kind of based. So feel free to give it a watch if you get the opportunity, if for no other reason than to say you have, and therefore join the Cool Kids Club. Oh. Surprise, motherfucker! Look, I will paint them eventually, okay? Alright? Just... 
Just get off my case. I get to go home in one week. And I'm leaving home in three weeks. They call me up home just to pick me dry. Bow, bow, bow. Following suit in directions. I'm calling outside for protection. I tell them not to do and they don't know why. Down, 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 now. I'm really testing and bow. I'm over the myths and placebos. I don't really mind if I just ran away.